Okay guys, I got part of setting the engine down in the blazer, but today the temperature is 95, heat index is over 100. Apparently the iPhone, once it gets to a certain temperature, it shuts off. And all it says on the screen is that your temperature has been exceeded and the phone must cool off before you can use it again. So I moved the phone in here in the garage Basically, I've put my spare Turbo 400 case with pan and output uh, housing on, you know, under the vehicle because I'm going to mount it to the back of the engine to use it to make sure I have everything square and lined up with my uh, rear end or drive shaft tunnel, whatever you want to call it, because you can visually verify that your stuff is sitting straight in your chassis if you have the transmission on the back of it if that makes any sense so i'm going to climb under here and try to mount this transmission house, uh, housing or case to the back of the engine start keep this process going so we can get these motor mounts welded in okay guys i'm gonna do a little bit of free handing i just wanted to show you specifically up here at the top how much more space I now have after lowering the engine to get to those upper bell housing bolts or on the LS application. The one, number five, fifth bolt up there on the top left. So this is where I'm at. I got my spare case. I'm gonna try to get it up on okay, there. Okay guys. I got the spare case connected to the back of the transmission. And now, I'm just trying to validate or verify. You know, I'm just kind of giving you a shot through the safety loop. I'll get the back end of that transmission lined up exactly through the loop to the rear end. And we'll go from there. So let's keep moving. Okay, guys. I think I've got it as square and straight as I can in the chassis, pointing back through the tunnel to the rear end, passing through the drive shaft safety loop, all that good stuff. Everything is level, because I went ahead and level, put a level on the core support, and uh, the engine is now exactly the same bubble middle on left and right i've got equal reveal on my pads for the engine mounts even the <clears throat> I don't know if you guys can see this even the dampener is lined up straight across with the sway bar hopefully i'm gonna have richard's eyes look at it when he gets here we gotta throw down a little bit of welding action Sorry about the shaky camera work. I'm just trying to get a little bit of something recorded while I'm out here melting. Okay guys, I wanna finish this video up before it gets too dark and won't be able to see anything. Um, I can tell you right now that hats off has to go to Richard because trying to weld with a 30 amp MIG welder on a 15 amp breaker um, that is a battle of fertility and will drive you insane because you keep blowing the breaker just as the stupid welder starts to weld decent. So he did persevere and get the uh, new motor plates welded to the front cross member. We got everything located, test fit the engine and a uh, hollow uh, Turbo 400 case. And I will, I'm glad to report that the uh, Summit muscle car oil pan is dead even with the bottom of the cross member. Now I was very worried because when the engine was first installed before we leveled everything out with the transmission on the back of it, it was hanging down probably close to a half an inch below the cross member. And I was really worried that that was gonna be an issue. But once we started leveling the transmission where it would actually have a decent uh, output pinion angle and sit on the actual cross member 
uh, it pulled the pan up and there wasn't a problem or not enough that I think anybody would ever be worried about hitting anything so that's where we're at on the uh, motor mount change I'm really glad that those uh, 2.8 v6 mounts are removed I should have done that a long time ago because it gives a lot of extra room in the tunnel area for uh, re removing and replacing a transmission so I'm probably gonna have to still build a custom transmission cross member because the Turbo 400 places the cross member in a far different area on the frame that has like a closed in almost uh, I don't want to say plated, but it's not an open area on the blazer frame, so I can't mount the existing cross member in the traditional fashion. Uh, the traditional cross member that I had that was modified was extremely heavy, so I don't know for sure if I'm going to bother with trying to modify the ends on it to work in the new in the new location, at, or just buy a kit and build one. I don't know. I'm not for sure which way to turn right now I know the cheap $50 kits you can get from Speedway they don't come with the humps they don't come with any provisions for exhaust pipes and that's an added expense and concern and different you know issues arise with trying to run the exhaust on this thing and have you know could be a nightmare and maybe the weight savings going to that you know tubular cross member isn't worth it so Anyway, before it gets too dark, I wanted to wrap up this video about removing the V6 mounts, which lowered the engine, I would say a good inch, inch and a quarter. Um, I can't wait to uh, test fit the exhaust manifold, especially on the driver's side, to see if I gained any clearance or created any new issues with the steering shaft. So anyway, hopefully this is a little bit informative and if you guys are doing a, a V8 swap on your S10, especially these first gen S10, you know, frames and whatnot, hopefully this will help you out. Please like, subscribe, and share, and hit the little bell, and hit up the comments, because apparently YouTube has decided that the action and the amount of comments and replies you get directly affect how much they like you. Thanks for watching.